<laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Octagon 48 post-fight press conference. So, earlier this year, we announced we were going to come to the UK for the first time. Since then, we've signed a broadcast deal with one of the biggest broadcasters in the UK. We've signed some amazing um, media partnerships as well, and it was great to put on a great show. The crowd were amazing, the atmosphere was brilliant, and um, it's great to finally be here in, in the UK. So, for this first press conference this evening, I'm joined by Zenik Polivka, Jon Serdu, Mark Dussis, uh, Scott Askum, Akon Wanless, and Common Day. Uh, if you've got a question, please raise your hand and somebody will come and bring a microphone to you. Simon, fires only. Scott Askum, uh, Mark Dussis, Akon First off, it's been a little while since we've seen you in action, certainly in the UK. How did it feel to be walking back out there in front of your home fans and, and to get a win as well? Yeah, obviously both were both amazing to get a win and to walk out in front of their own fans. Um, yeah, it's honestly if everybody knew what I've been through, like with injuries and stuff, like it's been a long, long road, man. Like there, there were points where I've cried, points where I thought I'd never fight again. Um, like just last year, I had surgery. Um, I fought less than 12 months after surgery, maybe a little too soon, but I rolled the dice and it didn't come off. Um, I still don't feel like I'm back to my old self yet. Um, but like I say, it's been a long time out, uh, keep improving. And this is another reason why I took this fight. Um, I know it was a little bit short notice, but I wanted to get another one in before the end of the year. I wanted to be busy, I wanted to be active. And I, like I say, I, I, I know how the training's going, so I know I can get back to that. So um, I just need to transfer that over into fights. Uh, maybe it is a little bit of ring rust, or maybe it's just getting back in, back in, the, in there and working it out, I don't know. But um, uh, just keep improving. Obviously, a win's a great to um, have as well. So. Um, just keep getting bad. And what's the situation in terms of your contract status and where you're looking to fight from this point on? I'm looking just to fight as much as possible. Uh, that's a manager's question. I'll stay, I'll stay out of that uh, negotiation stuff. But uh, yeah, I want to stay active, I want to stay busy, and uh, it was a pleasure to be here in Octagon. Brilliant. And uh, one for Akon. The uh, Joker. The Joker. <laughs> um, obviously, you had a a big night planned, you know, you were looking to make a real statement and unfortunately uh, your opponent jumped at the same time as you, you jumped and uh, we ended up with a, with a no contest. How frustrating is that, 25 seconds after a long training camp and what's your overriding emotions as you're sitting there right now? Damn, that was 25 seconds into the fight? Jesus, that would have been, what, well actually I was going to say one of my quickest knockouts, I think I've got seven seconds somewhere, someone reminds me. But um, yeah, it was super frustrating. I didn't even bring my jumper cakes into the cage because I'm just was so gutted and um, he zigged when I zagged, you could say. <laughs> he jumped and got scared of the first knee but I very deceptively threw the second knee which was going to hit him straight in the sternum and then what well, I believe the fight had been done from there with a barrage of lightsabers to the chin. But he, 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 he found a, a way out, you know, and he's done it before in past fights where He's got clipped in the nose. You know, it's, it's actually last fight, yeah. He, he got clipped in the nose, could have maybe continued and decided to take the, the way out of the referee out. So I'd like to see that box. I need to see that box, see if it's intact. If it is broken, then fair play. But if it's not, then the question has to go to, where's his balls? <laughs> I can answer that one. Um, what, what do you want next, Akon? I mean, obviously, not having had that much cage time tonight, how quickly do you want to get back in there? It looks like it's going to be a big year for Octagon in 2024. How big of a part do you want to play in that? I want to play a massive part. It's going to be a big part for the Jedi. Yeah. Not obviously the, the Joker today because uh, the reason why I'm dressed up as the Joker is because I sacrificed a whole of Halloween. I love Halloween. I love decorating my whole house. I love transforming myself into different characters. And I didn't get to do this because I've been sacrificing my time and efforts into taking out back at Bannock and putting a lightsaber through his chin, but his balls, unfortunately it happened today for his balls, but yeah. Um, and uh, so how I want to go back in is straight away. The next fight is, what you got, December or something like that. I was searching for uh, Shiroki because me and him had a little bit of beef online. So I was thinking, yeah, Shiroki, let's fight. And he actually did accept the fight, but he said he wanted to fight in Stranglis, uh, uh, Ostrovan. So I'm like, okay, cool, you go ahead. I'll do Manchester, you do that, and we'll meet each other down the line. So if one of them two drop out in December, I'll be ready. You know what I mean? So if that answers your question, as soon as I'm fucking possible. Sorry for swearing. Thanks very much.
Akon, fantastic attire. It's great to see you in the Joker outfit. Thank Obviously, you. you're a man who goes by the nickname the Jedi, so we're expecting some Star Wars outfits tonight. What made you pick the Joker? Um, well, I actually had a Star Wars outfit planned for you guys, and I don't know what happened. Uh, I, I just got rushed. Like, I literally caught it. I don't know. Just take your clothes off. Take them off. <laughs> I've been asked that a few times before, you know, in the stripping world, but not preparing for a fight, about to go out and face a man that's preparing to kill you and someone shout, take your clothes off! And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, where's the money? <laughs> where's the money? So, uh, I had to get pretty much naked before stepping into the cage, which is all my Jedi clothes gone. Uh, I, I had the big surprise of Kylo Ren, I had his lightsaber, I had his mask, uh, and even the tune and the music, it was all set out for you, bro. I had something special for you. I couldn't perform it tonight, so I'm good. I don't know if that's the venue's fault or whoever's fault, but uh, next time we need to make sure that the Jedi can do his, his walkout because it's special and it's not going to fight most times. Well, hopefully we'll see that in the future. Obviously, tonight ended a lot quicker than we thought it would. So, are you going to take some time off, have some celebratory Jaffa cakes? Are you getting right back into camp for another big fight? I'm going to have the weekend to eat as many Jaffa cakes as possible as I can. I'm going to make love to my missus and then I'm going to uh, get right back into camp. Oh, sorry, my man. I'm going to get right back into camp. Yeah, sorry, mum. I love you. My mum's here, everybody, by the way. The queen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to get right back into camp. And uh, if, if Bannock fixes by then, I'd love a rematch. But if not, like, like I said, I've, I've laid out who I want to fight. I've, I've got these wanted posters. If you guys want to check out my wanted posters, head down to, down to my YouTube. We've got a great little storyline. You can follow it along. You can see who I want to fight next. And you can see the progression of the Jedi. So let's go. Absolutely. And obviously, we've seen later in the year, we're getting a Birmingham card. Obviously, you being from that neck of the woods, I imagine you want to be on that. You're very close now to a title shot, looking at where you are in the rankings. One big win away, you could get it. Do you want a title shot on that Birmingham card? Ooh, the future is bright, you know? So, of course, if things go my way, and I keep not get, I forget another no contest, you know, I need to progress my career. And I'm, 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 not, I'm not really trying to rush, you know what I mean? I really want to get there and take everybody out on the way. You know, that's why I've created these bounty posters and these wanted posters, because I want to take everybody out one by one. Uh, but going to Birmingham is going to be very special and if that, that means a title shot then we'll sit back or talk with the team and if, it, if the stars align on that night, let's go. Fantastic stuff. I've got a question for you. Obviously a great performance for you tonight, knocking out Alex Ahore. We know how much he means to the British fans, but you came over into enemy territory, landed a crushing knockout amongst your fantastic career achievements. Where does this rank? Ah, okay, hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he is one of the most experienced guy in my career, I think so. He's one of the biggest uh, scouts in my career, so I come here just like um, to, to take over. For sure, UK, it will be my second home because, uh, how I said before, here is a lot of my, my public, so I come here, I do my job and go, go forward. Fantastic. Last one for me, for Scott. Obviously, you've done amazing things on the international circuit, fighting in the UFC, winning a KSW championship, but you were in England tonight, fighting for Octagon, and you had a Marmy Army who were shouting loud from the rooftops. What was it like to hear from them? Do you have any words for them? Yeah, obviously, to be back here in the UK where the crowd is amazing. Uh, I've got a good following fan base and a good, uh, even better fan base at home, so yeah, to hear them in, in my own stadium, it's amazing, yeah. Fantastic. Is there anybody who'd like to go next? <laughs> um, yeah, we got the end of it. Go for it. Thank you. Uh, question for for Jon. Uh, congratulations on a really impressive performance. I'm not sure if you had a chance to get on Twitter yet, but Amaran Gogolati has uh, called you out and said he'd like to fight you. So, just wanted to get your thoughts on that, and if that's a fight you would like to take next. Thank you. First of all, uh, no, I didn't see nothing. I didn't saw uh, on Twitter. I was just talking with my my parents and uh, such of that, you know. Uh, I don't know how how uh, promotion decides we will go forward. So how I think so he now is on six sixteen ranking, yeah. Uh, but I'm just looking forward for title shot or something like that. If not, uh, I'm interested in um, in rematch with uh, Velichkovic because uh, it's uh, it's uh, by one of that rematch he knows that he 
he was a, it was a mistake, you know, that fight, first fight uh, with him. So for sure, public uh, won that, uh, won't see that match. So I hope so, uh, matchmaker and uh, Andre Novotny give me the fight. I don't know. It's a, I don't think so. It's a good fight now for uh, for me with uh, Gogoradze because he is uh, down in ranking. So I'm looking for uh, for up in ranking and I'm looking for title shot. So I think so. He he have to to stay in uh, to wait. Thank you. And uh, just one question for Mark. Uh, T uh, very impressive performance. Uh, you went, you know, went, went the distance with a very tough and uh, experienced opponent. Just wanted to get your thoughts on how the fight went and, and what you can take away from it, and what you learned from taking on a veteran like Scott. I'm thinking I learned a lot from it. Um, I took the fight in three weeks' notice, but I didn't uh, think about it three seconds because it's a legend. He's, I watched his career for a long time. I think when I started MMA, he was fighting for ten guys in the UFC. So. Uh, it was an honor for me to fight him uh, in front of the UK crowd, and yeah, what I, I couldn't uh, follow the game plan. I want to start at the brawl. He used his, his experience, very good. Yeah, it hurts a little bit. Not my body. It's like I'm tricking. I have nothing, but on the heart a little bit because I'm I'm training every day. I want to fight the best guys on the big stage. I took the chance. Uh, the chance. It didn't. It didn't work out, but we will we will keep going. Yeah. Uh, just a quick one for Akon, so Taylor from Combat Sports UK, good to see you Akon. Um, good to see you too. I noticed as you were walking out there was a bit more of a change in demeanour, so I want to ask you, why Why so serious this evening? Why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, why so serious is because they took off my clothes from me, you know, I think I said that before. <laughs> they probably wanted me to walk out like the Joker today, they were like, what are you doing? It's Halloween! Where's your outfit? But um, yeah, underneath the mask, underneath the hood, that's that's pretty much how I am. You know, I'm very serious. I didn't really get to do all the the, the antics and the the little show that I like to put on for you guys. Uh, you know, it's not really for me. I could just walk into the cage and do what I do every single day. You know, get business. So I really do like to put on a show for the fans. Um, so it was a shame that I didn't get to bring out my lightsaber today and and. Uh, put on the walkout show that I, that I really wanted to do because it's a good three minute walkout <laughs> it's a quite long one so I was probably sitting backstage uh, in the prep area for about 15 minutes completely naked well in my boxer shorts and my my box that panic forgot and uh, yeah so I got a bit cold and just was like get me in the cage I need to fight so that's probably why I look serious <laughs> I look serious any other questions yeah Fellow Jedi George Stamens won his fight earlier in uh, the evening. How was it working with him on the challenge series in the Octagon Challenge? Man, I, I just want to say a big round of applause to George Stamens, and uh, I am so proud of that guy. As a fellow young Jedi, he has a big, bright future ahead of him. The young man's only 23 years old, and I remember I got into MMA at the age of 23, and he's already here at this this stage, becoming the the Octagon Challenge champion. And to finally shut Dennis Spring Pong up. It's actually crazy that guy actually wants to fight me, but that's uh, <laughs> it's funny. But um, uh, it's a great, spectacular performance from George. I didn't get to watch all of it because obviously I was prepping for my fight. Uh, but like I say, I'm really looking forward to watching the future of this boy and uh, seeing what he can become, you know. So the future's bright and uh, the, the force is strong with George Staines. Uh, and one more. Uh, Hassan Khaleesi earlier made it 1-0 one, one for the um, English versus the Irish on the card, then George the second one. How does it work? How was it working with Hassan as well throughout the series? Man, I, I don't know what the Irish were smoking, but like, <laughs> even uh, the, uh, Aaron wanted to fight me too. It's pretty crazy. It's crazy. All these boys want to fight me. They're like, the Jedi versus Ireland now? Like, what's going on? But um, I'm glad. Um, Dennis, uh, Hassan's another boy I'm very proud of. You know, he, he came up there, very showed a good intelligence, intelligence in the fight. He's very patient. You know, he chopped them legs up. You know, the GP top team special chopping calf kicks. I felt a few when Brad was like, "Yeah, let me show you this calf kick." You know, he's, he's this tall, so he's able to calf kick me very easily. And like, ah, I can't even hit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I'm happy for their both their performances. And on the show, it was great to be with them boys. You know, uh, going back to George, 
you know, me and him share the both same Lego, uh, Lego and Star Wars uh, passion. But he's, I've seen his collection's a bit bigger than mine, so I need to upgrade. I need to win a bonus, so I need to need my opponent to stay there so I can win a bonus and buy some Lego, and quite possibly get a big, um, big collection like Brad Pickett. So yeah, but it's, it's great to be with all them boys and happy to see their success. And one quickly for Scott, it looked like you were almost out on your feet necessarily and you threw the big knee, uh, where did that quite come from? Yeah, another interviewer said that backstage, yeah, I'll have to watch it back, uh, I can't remember being rocked at any time, uh, but maybe I was, I'll have to watch it back, um, but yeah, um, like I said, that's all I can say on that really, because I can't remember it. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> like, like I said, I, I remember the flying knee that dropped you. I, I remember that one. <laughs> I don't remember this. <laughs> and anybody else? Yeah, I'm sorry. Great. Uh, God, we'll do one more. Yeah. Great. Thank you. 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 Just a quick question for Zdenek. Zdenek, you had two losses in a row. Uh, now the challenge, Lee Chadwick here in Manchester, you really needed one. You made it really clearly, so how did you feel today? Tak uh, cítím se dobře, vítězství tam je. Sice jsem si představoval ukončení v prvním kole, ale uh, Chadwick byl tvrdý, tvrdý chlap, uh, zápasník a uh, určitě ne, nechtěl prohrát takhle a chtěl dokončit po výsledství, takže, uh, ale cítím se skvěle, vítězství proti zkušenému soupeření se vždycky, vždycky potěší. I feel really good about my victory today. I'm really glad that I managed to secure a win and I expected a first round submission, but my opponent was actually very, very tough and he did not want to lose that quickly. So I'm very happy that I won against such an experienced opponent. You told me after your fight that uh, you are planning to go for a beer with your team. So what are your plannings right now? Do you know where you're going to stay this night and how big will be the celebration? <laughs> no, tak já půjdu na pivo znova, to mám v plánu. <laughs> a oslava, přijedu domů a dolečím, dolečím loket a Zase se dám do tréninku, protože bych chtěl v Ostravě zápasit ještě. A, takže oslavujeme tak rychle, budu s rodinou a pojedeme dál. Of course I'm going to have one more beer, but then my priority is healing my elbow because I really want to get back into training quite quickly and I want to fight in Ostrava. This is why I will celebrate just quickly and then go back into training and be with my family. That's great. So we're here, October MMA, we're in the UK. Uh, Andre Pavel coming up next.